Circuits are used to carry an electrical current from a power source to electrical components, where the current can then supply energy to these. Here's an example of a circuit with multiple components. First, we have a cell, which is a type of power source that will power the circuit. Then we have a lamp, which we're trying to power. The electrical current will give energy to this and make it light up. And finally, we have a switch that's used to turn the circuit on or off. In other words, this can cut off the supply of energy to the lamp. We'll be seeing many more different types of components to use in circuits throughout the course. But how do we connect the components together? All components must be connected by electrical conductors. Usually, these conducting wires are made of long, drawn-out metals, since these conduct electricity well. We'll then wrap these in insulating plastic so we don't hurt ourselves when touching the wire. Then the wires must be arranged in a special way. There must be a complete loop starting and ending at the power source. Now this is a very important rule that all circuits need to follow. What it means is that there must be a loop from one end of the battery to the other. There can be branching paths in a circuit, but at no point can the current go back on itself. We also call this type of path around the circuit a closed loop. If there is no loop, then the current stops completely. This is how the switch works. By breaking the circuit, the switch removes the closed loop and so a current cannot flow. In your exams, you need to be confident with designing and analysing circuits, but you won't be expected to do complicated drawings like this one. So instead, we draw circuit diagrams to represent circuit components and how they are connected. So first, we have simple symbols to represent different components. From the previous circuit, would use these two lines and a plus symbol to represent the cell, a circle with a cross for the bulb and two circles with a line for the switch. Then we'd draw lines between the components to represent the wires connecting them. This shows us what order the components are in and also that we have a clear closed loop around the circuit. For your exams, you need to be able to recognise and draw many different circuit symbols. So let's go through some key components and their symbols. First, let's learn more about the power source we just saw. Cells are power sources that generate electric currents using their stores of chemical energy. You won't need to know the details of how a cell works for your exams, but you should be able to recognise that it has a negative and a positive terminal. These will determine the direction an electric current flows around a circuit, but we'll learn more about this elsewhere. Then as we saw, the circuit symbol for the cell consists of these two lines with a plus sign next to the longer line, though this isn't always drawn. Not only does this symbol tell us where the cell is in a circuit, but also what way it's facing as the shorter line represents the negative terminal and the longer line the positive terminal. Now you might be wondering why we refer to this as a cell instead of a battery. Well, that's because in circuits, the word battery has a particular definition. Batteries are two or more cells connected in series. So we use these for circuits when we need more power than one cell can provide. When connecting the two cells, we should make sure that we connect a positive terminal to a negative terminal. Otherwise, we won't get the power we want. Then the circuit symbol for a battery is just the symbol for a cell repeated twice. Again, we should make sure that these are connected positive to negative when we draw a circuit diagram. So make sure to only use the word battery for circuits with multiple cells, otherwise you could be penalised in an exam. 
Now, what about the other components we've seen so far? Switches are used to manually break or complete a circuit to stop or continue current flow. Now, there are many different ways of designing a switch, but they all follow the same principle. That is, we can move a conductor to a position where it is or isn't in contact with a wire. Then the circuit symbol for this is two circles with a line in between. We usually draw the line only joined to one circle to represent a switch in general, but this can also be used to specifically represent a switch that is open. In other words, the switch is stopping the current. Then by drawing the line connected to both circles, we show that the switch is closed and that a current flows through the circuit. This is often used when explaining how currents in circuits change as we open or close switches. And lastly, lamps will illuminate when a current flows through them, though we sometimes refer to these as bulbs. These work as the current heats up the filament in them, causing this filament to emit light they will learn more about how lamps work and their properties elsewhere. Then you should get very familiar with the circuit symbol for lamps, this circle with a cross inside, as these are very common in exam questions. There are many more circuit symbols that you'll need to know for your exams, but we'll see these when we learn about their components. For now, let's look at the ways we can arrange these components. Components can be connected in series or parallel. We'll learn more about these terms later. But you should be familiar with the fact that when we say components are connected in series, they are part of the same branch of a circuit. Or any path around the circuit goes through both or neither of the components. So here, since there's only one path around the circuit, both lamps must be in series. Then when we say components are connected in parallel, we mean that they are on separate branches and no path around the circuit goes through both. So here, to get from one end of the cell to the other, the electric current can either pass through the lamp in the middle or at the bottom, but not both. So this means the lamps are in parallel. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, Head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.